first, Brother Moore is going to tell you about a brother of ours who made the ultimate courageous sacrifice. Glenn? Thank you, brothers. It's an honor to be speaking with you this evening. Our fraternity has a long history of producing brothers that go on to excel in virtually all walks of life, whether it's business, medicine, entertainment, or virtually any other field of endeavor. There is a brother of IGAM that has made a difference or continues to make a difference. And while it's always cool to brag about the big celebrities in Phi Gamma Delta, the true impact of the fraternity is felt at the chapter level, where every day we have undergraduate brothers and graduate brothers setting the good example by living our values on their campuses and in their communities. I promise you one thing, that at some point in the future, when you look back and you think about your, these men, your admiration for them will only grow as you recall how they, had the, how they set the good example, how they had the courage to make the tough decision, even though it may not have been the popular decision, and how they were willing to make sacrifices for their brothers and the greater good. They may never have a book or a magazine article written about them, but their impact on our lives is profound. I wanna tell you about one of my heroes because of how he lived our values and his courageous leadership. I left my job on the fraternity staff in September of 1996, moved back to Lubbock, Texas, and immediately stepped into the role of Purple Legionnaire of the Lambda Tau chapter at Texas Tech University. It would be in this capacity that I would first meet and get to know Darren Andrews. Darren was a man that when he did something, he did it with 110% commitment, and he brought that level of commitment to Phi Gamma Delta. He was a great brother. He would do anything to help out a brother that was in need. In every chapter, there's a core group of brothers that you can always count on to be there. It doesn't matter if it's a house cleanup or a highway cleanup early in the morning in freezing cold temperatures, you know that they're always going to be there. Well, Darren was part of our core group of brothers. He was always there and he always had a huge smile on his face. Darren graduated from Texas Tech in 1998 with a degree in international business. He would go to work for a corporation as its international sales manager, but business wasn't his passion. His passion was football. So when his old high school football coach offered him the opportunity to coach football, he jumped at the chance. He would coach two years in his hometown of Cameron, Texas, and two more years in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. The attacks on 9-11 changed everything for Darren. He would enlist in the Army in 2002, he would rise to the rank of second lieutenant, and he would be deployed to Afghanistan twice. It was during his second deployment to Afghanistan, while out on patrol in Paktika province, that the lead vehicle in his convoy was struck by an IED. As his, the men in his unit began to dismount from their vehicles, an ambush began. Darren spotted a Taliban fighter rising up from behind a wall with an RPG on his shoulder that was ready to fire. He shouted a warning of RPG. And then this man, this brother in our fraternity, this husband whose wife, Julie, was five and a half months pregnant with their daughter, JC. This father, whose son, Dalen, was only three days away from his second birthday. This devoted son, whose mother, Sandra, and dad, Andy, are both still alive. This twin, whose brother, Jarrett, is also a FIGAM. The second lieutenant in the United States Army would, in a split second, decide to sacrifice everything he had and everything he ever dreamed of having as he would knock three enlisted men out of the way of the RPG, but in so doing, is himself mortally wounded. Darren faced several personal testing points all along the journey that would take him to that fateful day in Afghanistan. For instance, he could have made the decision not to join the military in the first place. It's the same decision that the vast majority of us have made or will make in the future. But after the attacks of 9-11, the call to serve and protect his nation was too strong for him to ignore. 
Darren tried to enlist in the Army twice, but was unsuccessful due to medical issues. He could have said, I tried and I failed, and no one would have blamed him if he called it a day and he'd gone back to a job that he loved coaching. But he didn't quit. He pressed on. He was finally able to enlist on his third try. After he enlisted, Darren didn't agree with the elitist differences between officers and enlisted men. He thought that far too many officers did not understand the plight of the enlisted men. Again, Darren could have declined to re-enlist after only one tour of duty because he found the Army's practices unfair and no one would have blamed him. I mean, who in their right mind would believe that they could change a monolith as big and as bureaucratic as the United States Army? Darren believed he could make a difference. He didn't quit. He pressed on. He took advantage of the Army's Green to Gold program, which allowed him to earn a master's degree while also earning his officer's commission. You see, Darren intended to tear down the barriers that he despised from the inside by setting the example himself of how he believed that an officer should interact with enlisted men. And finally, Darren didn't have to go out on patrol that day. The week before, he had been riding in a vehicle that was struck by an IED. He would receive his second Purple Heart for the injuries he sustained that day. He was placed on restrictive duty because of those injuries. But a week later, when his unit was scheduled to go out on patrol once again, Darren took himself off restrictive duty so that he could be with his men when they traveled into harm's way. Uh, again, no one would have blamed Darren if he had chosen to sit this one out. Not even the army, he was on restrictive duty. But to sit back while others were doing the hard work, taking the big risk just wasn't in his nature. And just as we learned that we could always count on Darren to always be there for us at the Lambda Tau chapter, his brothers in arms knew that, they, that he would be there for them as well. Because frankly, there's no other place that he'd rather be. Those of us that knew Darren wish that he had chosen to sit this one out. We wish that he had stayed in camp that day. The one person who would not have changed that decision is Darren himself. I don't think that he would have ever forgiven himself if his unit had gone out that day and some of his men had been wounded or killed in action while he was back at camp recuperating. It would have haunted him for the rest of his life. He would have agonized about the decision to stay behind. He would have wished that he could have been with his men just so that he could do something, do anything that might have saved their lives. And that's why he didn't sit this one out. He pressed on. And so it was on September 4, 2009, that Second Lieutenant Darren Dean Andrews would ride out of camp with his unit to meet his destiny and die a hero's death. Darren was awarded the Silver Star for his actions that day. It is the third highest military decoration for valor. In 2013, the Texas legislature awarded Darren the Legislative Medal of Honor. This award is given to only one Texas citizen in our armed forces every two years who performs a deed of personal bravery or self-sacrifice that is so conspicuous as to clearly distinguish this person's gallantry above the person's comrades. Darren's final decision was a courageous one, to sacrifice everything so that he could save the lives of three of his brothers in arms. We often talk about service. After all, it is one of the values of Phi Gamma Delta and service always involves sacrifice. We sacrifice our time, we sacrifice our labor, we sacrifice our money, and much more rarely, as in Darren's case, we sacrifice our lives. Brothers, I hope that none of us ever takes for granted how blessed and how lucky we are to be living on this continent. I hope that none of us ever forgets 
that all of the opportunities which we've been given and all of the freedoms which we enjoy, including fraternal association, have been fought for and are being protected by millions of brave men and women who have served, are serving, or will serve in our armed forces or as first responders. Brave men and women who have made acts of uncommon valor seem commonplace. Brothers, I truly hope that we never forget or fail to appreciate these things. Thank you for listening to Darren's story of persistence and courage. Thank you. Thank you.